Now give me a cigarette, darling. Sure. Anything you want. Anything. Get down out of sight. Do you think we've been followed? Turn off the radio. <laughs> Apparently, we aren't the only ones who think of places like this. Uh, I guess we have to go anyway. Late. You get nervous, don't you? I guess so. Where are you going? I don't know. Nowhere as usual. Yeah, getting cold. Beautiful. Boy. Boy. Darling, don't. It is late. I love you, Paulie. I love you so much I can't stand to think of him ever. Get in here. Boys. Gentlemen, you're late. I told you to be here first. Well, the kid was driving. He got us lost. I can't find enough street signs up here. If you can't follow simple orders, I'll have to replace you. Won't happen again. The date set? The 25th, Saturday. The address is 1822 Falcon Drive. There, gentlemen, is our ripe plum, ready to pick. Sure looks spooky. It's an enchanted castle. And as all enchanted castles, it has a hidden treasure. Come, gentlemen. Come on. Huh? What? Let me show you the layout. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Sit down. We'll be getting little liquids with them lights. Every cup in Los Angeles is looking for me. Nobody's going to bother us up here. No. You climb down the hill to the house, cross the lawn to the back door. Then just to your left is a kitchen and a short hallway which leads to the living room. On Saturday morning, the owners start on a three-week holiday cruise down the coast of Baja, California. That's in Mexico. Yeah, I know, I know. What's with the servants? They live out. The house will be closed. A private police car patrols the area. The car passes at 10.30. It doesn't return for an hour and five minutes. You have exactly one hour. You start at 10.35. What kind of a box? A wall safe in the workroom, which adjoins the library. Here. I warn you, it's a very substantial safe. I'll open it. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have chosen you. Just do it quietly and neatly. I've worked too long and too hard on this plan to allow a slip-up. Who's that? What was what? I heard something. He's jumpy. All hoods is jumpy. But I know how to handle him. I'll guarantee him. Now, will you listen to what the man's telling you? Don't push me. Well, quit being jumpy and listen. All right, all right. Don't push gentlemen, me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, take it easy. Take it easy. How much stuff is it supposed to be? Quite a bit. Bring a large briefcase. There are rings, bracelets, pins, several rather good necklaces. The collection is insured for 350000 But if you follow my instructions carefully, it's a very simple job. The layout clear to you? We got it. Until Saturday. Good luck, John. Thanks. Come on, Junior. You just can't wish that stuff out of there. All right, all right. Don't shove it, huh?
Well, we certainly can find the spots. <laughs> I could use a drink, a double. Start the car. Paulie, what are you doing? Let's go. Those men, don't you think we ought to report them to the police? Oh, that'd be just fine. Have you figured a way to explain how we happen to overhear them? Stop being a Boy Scout, Marsh. They don't give a prize for it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Okay. He's not home yet. Want to dance? I wish you wouldn't wear Ralph's bracelet all the time. It's cute. My husband read a fairy story once about a mouse who put a bell on a cat. So he'd always know where it was. It's the only book he ever read. I wish you wouldn't wear it. Platinum. Polly, I don't want you going back to him. What will we do, live in the commissions, Ralph Fajer? I'm sorry. I won't mention it again. Let's not spoil the little time we have together. You're sweet. I could be happy with you, Marsh. But I've been poor. I hate it. Benson. Two more, same thing? Just one. Holy, you don't understand. I won't always be poor. If I believed that, I wouldn't want to make you part of my life. But I don't like hiding, sneaking around. We made a bad enough start as it is. The sooner we tell him, the better chance we'll have for some kind of decent... What are you thinking? About $350,000. About the places I'd like to go, the things we could see. Huh? Oh, nothing. I, I guess I've had enough. I'm getting the mumble jumbles. Let's go, Marsh. Yeah. I'll drop you at the usual place. Call me tomorrow. I want to talk to you. Ralph, I thought you were working. Where have you been? I went to a movie. Till 2 a.m.? I liked it. I saw it again. I'll bet you liked it. Who is he? Oh, Ralph, not that again. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I want to talk to you, Paulie. I've been waiting here going crazy. I went crazy a long time ago. If I get on your nerves, why won't you give me a divorce? You'd like that, wouldn't you? So you could get a community property settlement, pull out with half of everything I own. You've been talking to that cheap lawyer of yours. 
There is someone else, isn't there? If you think so, get rid of me. I won't let you break it up for me. Look, let's straighten it out. Whatever's wrong between us, I want to fix it up. Get away from me, Ralph. You couldn't fix your own shoelace. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I picked you up out of the gutter. Did everything for you, bought everything for you, tried to make something decent out of you. How would you know what was decent? Well, you... Ow! Ralph, why don't you act your age? If I catch you, I'll kill you. No! <laughs> Polly, let me in. Please let me in. I'm sorry, baby. Ralph? He was waiting when I got home last night. He hit you. It's awful. You better put something on it. An antiseptic or something. That's not all. Look. Why that? How could he do that to you? How could anyone? I'm going to call a doctor. And let everyone in town know about it. Paulie, darling. Watch it. Sorry. Some iodine in the bathroom, in the bandage. Come on. I begged you not to go back to him. I begged you. This place is a mess. I didn't have a chance to straighten up this morning. Let me see here. This stuff up here. There's a rag. A little cold water on it. Here, darling. Wash your eye, and we'll put something on it. Kathy, let me talk to Nevins. Bars, don't be a fool. I'm going to settle this, Paulie. I'm going to tell him. Bars, you idiot. You can't do this. You'll ruin everything. Get on that phone and make some kind of excuse. Oh. Uh, Mr. Nevins, I... I'm sorry. I overslept. I just wanted to tell you I'd be there right away. I thought I'd better tell you. It's all right, Marsh. Make it as soon as you can. I'll start the meeting. Thank you. Morning. Hello, Kathy. The meeting started yet? Mm -hmm. They've been in there for over half an hour. I, I overslept. You look as though you hadn't had breakfast. Do you like some coffee? No, no, thanks. I better get in there. Mr. Marshall is here. Send him in. Marsh, just a moment. You can't have the head of the sales department looking rough. Yeah. Thanks. Come in, Marsh. The meeting's just about over. You know, Mr. Raymond? How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Franklin? Why, right, Marsh? Well, gentlemen, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Call me whenever it's convenient for you. I'll check with you late this afternoon. You may have an answer on those easements. Stop worrying, Franklin. I'm not a particularly easy man to cross. They know that when I make up my mind to go after something, I stop at nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, gentlemen. See you, sir. Mr. Franklin? Mr. Raymond, I didn't know you, Mr. Marsh. Oh, Marsh. Mr. Marlin. Sit down. I've just made a decision that's going to affect both of us. I've been watching you very carefully, Marsh. Very carefully indeed. Cigarette? No. Thanks. You're a bright boy, Marsh. Got my eye on you. 
You know this business better than anybody. Except me. You know what my situation is? I put up a big front, but no one's ever as big as the front he puts up. When I took you in, I said I was going to do something for you. Well, I am. I've got something real big planned. What I'm doing, Marsh, is putting my faith in you. Sure. Sure, I put up a big front, but the fact is I've got every cent I own tied up in this tract. I've even had to borrow money to make the trip. Trip? So it's a big trust. Marsh, it's... It's not easy for a man to talk to anyone about his home life. You probably noticed Mrs. Nevins is somewhat younger than me. Everybody has their differences, but a oh, man my age is already at a disadvantage. You know what I mean? The cards are kind of stacked against him. The point is, I'm taking Mrs. Nevins on a trip, sort of a, a little holiday, so we can get things straightened out. And that's where you come in. Where I come in? I'm putting you in charge of the office while I'm away. You'll run the whole show. You're young. You'll be wanting to get married yourself someday. It'll be a great chance for you. There'll be a raise. I couldn't let you do that. You can help me a lot, Marsh. That's why I'm putting this trust in you. Trust? Miss Stevens, would you come in a moment, please? Well, I don't want to keep you gabbing here all day. You ought to be out at the development. You're probably losing sales by the dozens. Come on, eh? Get to work. You're not at my desk, you know. Not yet. Stevens, meet your new boss. Mr. Marshall is going to be running the office while I'm away. I... I don't know what to say, Mr. Nevins. Don't say anything. Just get out there and sell. You do that pretty well. Must have quite a line. Thanks. I'll be honest, Stephen. Marsh, I think that's wonderful news. Congratulations. Thank you. I I've got some coffee and some donuts for you. I'm not hungry, Kathy. But, but it's all ready. It's right here. I'll take for a second. Coffee's not hot. And donuts aren't so good, but... If you're hungry, they don't... Thank you. Put this on the end of the line. I've been getting frantic. You sounded excited on the phone. He's been watching me, watching me constantly. I hate this mess, Paulie. I work for him. I owe him something. I can't stand it anymore. I'm going crazy. Come on, let's walk. He wants to take me on a trip. A long trip. I know. We're supposed to leave Monday. Monday? We can't wait. Paulie, we've got to tell him. I want you more than anything in the world, but we... You know how I feel, Marsh. I've been thinking about nothing else. And I finally thought of a way, the one way we could work at Marsh, one way we could be together. You mean you will go with me? Yes, but it's not just going away, it's how we go away. Because I'll not be stripped of everything. You remember the other night on the hill, those three men we overheard? Well, I've been thinking of a way. Now, listen carefully. We heard every move they're going to make for robbing the house. We could take them by surprise, they wouldn't have a chance. But what... There's nothing wrong about robbing thieves. Think of it, Marsh. $350,000 worth of jewelry. But I couldn't do it. I'm not a criminal, Paul. Of course you're not, but this is our one chance, darling. The stuff's going to be stolen anyway. I hope you're joking, Paul. I'm not joking. But we don't need that kind of money. I can work, darling. I can support you. Not the way he can, but I earn a fairly decent salary, better than a lot of people. You can earn money. You don't have to steal it. My family was poor, but we never... Marsh, I had you come down here because I wanted you to see this. Look. This is where I was born, Marsh. A lot of my life is spent in places like this. 
You didn't know that about me, did you? When you're trapped in a place like that, you do anything to get out, Marsh. Anything. I know. I'm not apologizing for anything I did. It was all part of the way out. I never thought before about what I wanted. Only about things I didn't want. Now I want you. And we found a way to do it. It's an easy job. You won't even need a gun. I can't. Paulie, we can have a good life together, but we can't build it on a rotten foundation. Don't you understand? We can't start out that way. I could. Up there, at the end of the line. Well, we can't say we didn't have our chance. He's right. It is the end of the line. Speak to Mrs. Nevins, please. Oh, when do you expect her? I see. I bring double. Rings, bracelets, a very simple job. $350,000. What do we do, live in the commission throughout Asia? Saturday, the 25th. House will be closed. Hello? Don't hang up, Polly. I'll do it. What will you do, Marsh? I'll go ahead with it. I'll do anything you say. I expected you yesterday, though. Won't do you any good at all. What? You're about the greenhouses, aren't you? I know my husband called you, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about greenhouses. I'm with the Nevins Development Company. We're a real estate firm. I came to talk about this house. It's a beautiful location. I wondered if you'd be interested in selling. This house? Yeah. Oh, my heavens, no. Oh. Real estate? That I didn't expect at all. An offer to buy? Yeah. Very fortunate. But I didn't expect you, uh, Mr. Marshall. Oh, no, we couldn't sell. I wonder, since I've come all the way up here, if I may take a look around. Of course you may. Well, now, you don't mind coming through the back way, do you? No, of course not. The house is quite large. Six bedrooms. Oh, but we do like spacious living. Isn't it? Well, I don't know too much about those things, honey. I'll let you decide on that. Do you think we can afford it? You just have to make out a new budget. Well, I'm sure the payments could be arranged, so you wouldn't even notice the difference in the two prices. This would be the lot here, number 282. It's 50 by 100 feet. Space is here on this street. It's really quite a choice lot. Let's go take a look at it. Fine. I'll be with you in a moment. I could have the papers ready for you tomorrow if you can come in then. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Fine. Thank you tomorrow. very much. Fine. Watch it. Careful. What about the Lindbury place? Well, I... I gotta go look at the grounds. No problems? No. Dr. and Mrs. Lindbury are leaving tomorrow on a fishing trip. Good. Now, let's plan tomorrow night. I've asked my friends, Phyllis and Tom Riker, over as a cover. We'll be going to the Crystal Room. It's supposed to be a farewell party because we're going away on a trip. Now, I want you to... Paulie, I'm worried. 
I don't like this. I don't like it either, darling, but it'll be over soon. After tomorrow night, nothing will keep us apart. Now, I want you to arrange something to keep Ralph working tomorrow night. I don't care what you do or how you do it, but arrange it. Something he can't delegate to you or to anybody. Something that will keep him at the office. Can you do it? Yeah, I, I'm sure I can. You better go. There's no way out. Only that door. Quick. Oh, he has his back turned. Kind of car, Mr. No, no, anything at all. Most inconspicuous car you've got. Oh, look, and uh, bill me personally, not my office. Uh, very well, Mr. Nevins. Uh, how about this car here? Marsh, it's all set. This is our big chance, darling. Yes, they're downstairs now. Get ready. I'll call you from the crystal room. Hooks for me, please. I'll pick you a drink, huh, honey? Thanks. There you go. Paula, you look like nine million bucks. I hope so. At least 350,000. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Well, Ralph just called to say he can't go with us. Some deal at the office. He's coming by now for a drink. Gee, that's too bad. Got to work all evening? Whoever knows with Ralph. Hey, Paul, you hear I was playing a minute ago when I take my sugar to you know what? <laughs> <laughs> we ever forget the routine? Never. It always was too fast for me. I never could keep in step. Not that I was much of a dancer. Well, you made up for it, honey. Now, I wasn't much in the looks department, but I did sell a lot of cigarettes. I don't know, maybe those fellows felt sorry for me. What do you think? Fortunately, Tom's a little astigmatic. Oh, you kids must have been excited. You know, I still don't know why Phyllis ever married a plumber like me. You are not a plumber. You are a plumbing fixture contractor. I can never get him to maintain any dignity. But he's sweet. He's kind of fat, but he's sweet. <laughs> You were lucky. Here's Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Hi, Phil. Tom. Hi, Tom. Good morning. Just heard the bad news. Bad news? You can't come with us tonight. What's the good of a going away party if the guy who's going away doesn't show? Oh, I figure you can manage all right without me. I, uh, I'm sorry about tonight, but Paulie, something came up with those city contracts Marsh was handling. I've got to meet Franklin back at the office. Would you like a drink, Ralph? Good, Tom, but not too much. Uh... I know just how you like it. Very dry. I think I'll join you. I got to get right back, so better make it a double. Huh? I'll sure go will. wash up. You don't have to kiss his hand. Just mix his drink. Honey, I was only being civil. Listen, Tom, you're a very big man in your own right. Paulie may be my best friend, but you don't have to kowtow to Ralph. The order for the new track means a lot to mm, both of us. Frack, schmack. You didn't get the order for the new track because he loves you. You got the order for the new track because you gave him the best price. All right, honey. All right. I'm talking to you about switching to martinis. Martinis the... never hurt me, honey. Oh, Tom, are you kidding? <laughs> How's the asked. drinks going? Fast. <laughs> well, you're just in time. Here's one in the house. Nice, son. Well, taste it. Good deal. I know just how you like them, Ralph. <laughs> well, here's to our second honeymoon. And here's to our first. Skull. You know, I sure do envy you two kids. 
I always wanted to go to Rio, but Tom and I are going to wait till we've mastered the mambo. That'll be the day. Best part of it is, Paulie and I will have a chance to be alone together. Kind of get to know each other again. People get to working too hard, too busy, getting the bad habits. We're going to change all that. Be like starting all over again. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little embarrassed listening to these two lovebirds. It's romantic. Well, that'll have to wait till Monday. I've got to get back to the office. Hurry up and meet us, right? Well, I right. don't know We'll be there till 11 or 12. You'll be there till they fold the joint. <clears throat> if the thing's worth doing, it's worth doing well. It's been my boy, a living doll. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll see you later. Well, Tom, what do we drink to? My last anniversary or the one that's coming up? Both. Last year's and this year's. I give you happy marriages that are made in heaven. I give you happy marriages, no matter where they're made. Well, let's go. Let me make that reservation. Be right with Tom, get my coat. Anything oh. wrong? I needed just one more thing to happen to me today. Won't it start? Would I be standing here like a dope if it would? You pay a fortune for a car, it won't even start. I'll drive you to the office. All right, you and Tom on. go on to the crystal room. I'll drop Ralph and meet you there. OK, Paulie. Come, come on, on fellas, let's go. Wait right. a minute, Tom. I'm going to drive. You've been eating too many olives with your martinis. OK, baby, OK. <laughs> If I get stuck, I may call you. You know how tough it is getting a taxi down here late at night. I don't want to be stranded here. Just give me a ring at the crystal room. I'll pick you up. That's what wives are for. Pick up? I don't start that. <laughs> I was just kidding. Oh, there's Franklin now. Let me out here. I'll catch up with you later. Howdy. Hello, Hello Ralph. Paulie. Don't you boys set up all night getting ulcers? We won't. Don't worry. Give me a call when you're finished. What kept you? I thought this was so important. I told you. Look, you'll have to handle this yourself. Make any of... decision you want. I'll get in touch with you later. But Ralph, will you do what I tell you? I've got an appointment. Now go on. too much if you let me go life would lose its touch what would I be without you there is no place for me without you never let me go I'd be so lost if you went away There'd be a thousand hours in the day without you, I know. Because of one caress, my world was overturned. At the very start, all my bridges burned. By my flaming heart, 
Get there? Yes, he safely delivered. Good. Uh, Tom, um, would you get me a drink from the bar? You know the kind I like. Sure. Tom, a little slow. Tom, you were very politely being asked to leave. What? Scotch. You get scotch. Oh. That's oh. the idea. Tom. Yes. Make it a slow scotch. Surely. Surely. Look, honey, we've known each other too long for any nonsense. Ralph's dragging me away on this trip and we'll be gone a long time. There's someone, someone special I've got to say goodbye to. Wow, you're letting yourself in for a lot of trouble, Polly. I'll be saying goodbye, Phil. I won't get another chance. Poor Ralph. Even the bells don't help, do they? You got a nice guy, Phil. I envy you. Cover for me, will you, in case Ralph should call? And Polly, about Tom, Alice, would you? I'd do anything in the world for you, and you know it, but you're putting me in an awful tight spot. If Ralph does call, I can only stall him so long. <laughs> Phil, All I... right, I'll do this for you. But you do me a favor. You make this a fast goodbye. Thanks. What happened to Polly, honey? You drink it, sweetheart. She's on the wagon. Throw it in the back. Mine's in the trunk. Nervous? I'm scared silly. But it's a funny kind of scared. I think I'm actually enjoying it. Thirty-five, exactly. Park over there, heading downhill. Mm -hmm. And if anything goes wrong, blow the horn. Nothing's going wrong. Good luck. Yeah. for this baby. Ralph, listen. Listen? I've listened long enough. I know he's down there. I saw him go. And I'm going to be waiting for him when he comes back up. I told you I'd fix both of you, didn't I? I'll go on the trip with you, Ralph. I'll do anything he wants. Shh! No! Get your hands up. Toss me the briefcase. Look, Mac, I don't know who you are, but you're asking for a lot. Toss me the briefcase, sir. Start walking. <gasps> Ralph, I'll do anything. Let me go. Walk 
Walk straight ahead. Are you gonna let him hijack us out of those jewels? I shut up and find a light switch. Pieces now, darling. We've still got to outrun them. It's all right now, darling. It's over. Those shots didn't mean anything like that to happen. Shooting. Ralph must have followed us. Paulie, you've got to get hold of yourself. He's dead. They were shooting at me and hit Ralph. You mean Ralph? Yes, darling. He's dead. I'm sure of it. We got in the way. We've got to think this out. It changes everything. When Ralph followed us. They killed him. We'll have to wait. We couldn't go away together. Not now, not yet. You go back to your friends at the Crystal Room. Marge, I can't. Don't you see, darling? It's the only way we can protect your reputation. My reputation? Holy! <laughs> You've got to get hold of yourself. You can't go hysterical now. I'm all right. There's a million things we'll have to think about. Drop me at my corner. I better keep the jewels. But the police will be getting in touch with you. We haven't much time. Hey, Polly. Boy, am I ever glad you got back. I've been out there on that dance floor for close to an hour. Tell you Tom is a real... Oh, that must have been some farewell. You know how it is. I could use a drink, Tom. Tom, you're off and running again. Well, I don't mind it, honey. You think she'll stay for this one? Something wrong, Paul? Boy, you're really kind of stuck on this guy, aren't you? Give me a cigarette, Phil. Hey, where's your bracelet? Uh, I must have left it at home. You're kidding, Paul? You were wearing it. This must be a real Jim Dandy fella you've fallen for. Well, I should talk. You remember that Mexican piano player at the Blue Room? Oh, <laughs> Vaysville. Look, Paulie, this may be none of my business, but you remember the way you felt about Tom when I married him? I admit he's not the kind of guy you'd hire to advertise a collar, but I love him. What are you gonna do? Now, maybe Ralph's not so bad. Why don't you give him a chance? Look, you've got to go on the trip anyway, so just try. Maybe life can be beautiful. Maybe you'll get to like him, you never can tell. Oh, that's my fella. He's getting faster and faster with the drinks. Oh, Paulie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get on a soap bar. <laughs> well, I'm okay. It's, it's just uh, I've got a, a headache. <laughs> don't let me be a wet blanket. Hey, um, why don't you kids come by the house on the way home? We can have a nightcap there. Oh, Say, okay. Paulie, that's a nice idea. Want to dance? Come on, I'll teach you the mop. Then when you get to Rio, you can surprise Ralph with it. It'll be quite a surprise. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. He's just taking the large economy course at Arthur Murray's. Hi, Inspector. Sorry to have to drag you out of bed so early. It's mutual. How does it look? Yeah, it looks pretty rough. Pretty rough. We found his gun on the road. Apparently, he was hit here, fell over the embankment down onto the driveway. The neighbors say they heard about a dozen shots. Two came from his gun. We found bullets all over the place, all from the direction of the house. And what about the owners? A doctor and Mrs. Lindbury. They're away on vacation. The house is closed up. We checked it. It's all secure. Any motive? It wasn't robbery. All sorts of identification. Ralph K. Nevins. Uh. 
real estate man. There's a U drive car parked about a block up the road. We're tracing it now. Looks like someone was waiting here in the driveway and blasted him. Yes, this is rough. Inspector. Go ahead, go ahead. You two had better follow through on this, and I'll see you at the office in the morning. If anything should break before then, call me at home. Yes, sir. Startled you, police officers. Is this the home of Ralph K. Nevins? Yes. Do you know him? I'm his wife. When was the last time you saw your husband, Mrs. Nevins? I drove him to his office just a few hours ago. What's this all about? But you didn't stay with him at the office? I've been to the crystal room with Mr. and Mrs. Riker. My husband was to have joined us, but at the last minute he had to work. Would you mind explaining just what this is? Better answer it. It's rung three times in the last ten minutes. Excuse me. Oh. Are you friends of the family, Mrs. Riker? Yes, that's right. I'll have to ask you a few questions. What's this Look, all about? Wait a minute, dear. You didn't seem to understand him. He's going to ask the questions, right? That's what I thought. <clears throat> Hello, Ralph. Police may be there any moment. I left my suitcase in the back of your car. Now look, hang the clothes in Ralph's closet. I know it's rough, but all you have to do is use your head. Yes, I'll be glad to. I expect him home very soon, but in case he should be late, would you care to leave your number and I can have him call you in the morning? All right, fine. Good night. Well? Mrs. Nevins, I'm afraid we have some very bad news for you. A possible motive is being sought for the murder of Ralph K. Nevins, wealthy real estate man, shot to death in the driveway of a deserted Highland Hills estate last night. Police have ruled out robbery and are seeking knowledge of any business enemies Nevins might have had. The wealthy man is survived by his wife, the former Pauline Banner, whom he married in 1952. There are no children. Other Los Angeles news is highlighted... Until the deal is in escrow. If the property owner learns of the proposed housing development, his price would be raised tenfold. The present quoted price seems eminently fair to me for everyone concerned. And I don't want you to be placed in a position where he can take advantage of you. According to the contract, the Lancashire division, consisting of 175 units, is to be ready by November 15th. The units should actually be completed early in October. Your bid for the carpeting should therefore be submitted not later than September 1st, sincerely, etc., etc. Hello, Kathy. I'm glad you're here. Awful, isn't it, Marsh? I just heard the news on the radio. I guess we're all pretty much upset. I'm sorry I broke up like that. It's all been such a terrible shock. I thought I'd better get down here as early as I could. Those telephones have been ringing all morning. Jobbers, contractors, wanting to know what's happened. And the newspapers. I don't know what to tell them. Nevins Development Company. Yes, Mr. Franklin, we know. Isn't it terrible? Yes, he's right here. Just a moment. The lawyer. Hello, Mr. Franklin. Yes, I heard it on the radio. It's... Well, of course I will. Thank you. I'll, d I'll do whatever I can. Fine, Mr. Franklin. I'll see you tomorrow morning. He wants me to go ahead and take over the office just as Nevins planned. That is, unless Mrs. Nevins plans any change. I don't think Mrs. Nevins plans a change. Huh? Where's the other phone?
Hello. Then September 1st, sincerely, etc., etc. I'm sorry, there's no more news. This is for Dean Franklin, my lawyer, personal. Nevins Development Company. Dean, I want my wife cut out of my last will entirely. I have good reason to suspect her of carrying on an affair with Marshall. He's arranged to keep me busy tonight so they can meet, but I intend to follow them and confront them. Please take care of this matter at once. I'm sorry, there's no more information that I can give you. There ought to be something one could do about the Porters. What can I do to help you, Marshall? I must remember to call you Mr. Marshall now. There's nothing much we can do until Franklin gets here. He'll be in first thing in the morning. Did you see Mrs. Nevins this morning? I thought on the circumstances... Kathy, look, why don't you go home? You need all the rest you can get for tomorrow. But, Marsh, I can't. There's so much I work to be done that, around Kathy. here. You can't do it all yourself. That's kind of you, but I can manage by myself. All right. Will you remember to sign these? Sure. Police officers. Sergeant Allen, I'm Lieutenant Jennings. Of course. Uh, come in. You usually work on Sundays, Mr. Marshall. E.V. Marshall. No, uh, we heard the news on the radio. Miss Stevens and I were just, well, we came down to see what we could do. Miss Stevens? She's uh, Mr. Nevin's secretary. She was. Miss Stevens, good morning. Good morning. When did you see Mr. Nevin's last? Yesterday afternoon. What time did you leave? The usual time, six o'clock. Had Mr. Nevins already left? No, he said he had some work to do. What's your position here, Mr. Marshall? Well, I, I was chief salesman. Mr. Nevins had arranged for me to take over the office while he was away. He was taking a trip? Yes, a uh, vacation. With Mrs. Nevins? Yes. Mrs. Nevins is a very attractive woman. Yes, indeed she is. Did they get along well together? I think that's a question you should ask Mrs. Nevins. I will. Mr. Marshall, when did you last see Mr. Nevins? Uh, yesterday noon. I spent the rest of the day in the field. Mm -hmm. Miss Stevens, did you know that Mr. Nevins kept a gun in his office? Yes. Do you know why? No. Sometimes he handled large sums of money. Know anybody who would want to kill him? No. Oh. Where was the gun kept? In this drawer. Who has the key to this? I have one, but as far as I know, it was never kept locked. When was this letter dictated? Yesterday, I imagine. You haven't finished typing it? No, I, I was just taking it off the machine when Mr. Marshall came in. Oh. Why, does that letter have any particular significance? No. Have you any idea what might have taken Mr. Nevins up into the Highland Hills area? No. No idea at all. What time does this office open? Nine o'clock. Who's Mr. Nevin's attorney? Mr. Dean Fra Franklin handled all his legal matters. You have his home address? I'll write it down for you. I, uh, I gather you have no idea who might have killed him. At the moment, no. Here it is. Thank you, Miss Stevens. We'll be in touch with you tomorrow. Gentlemen. I'll go out with Marshall. you. I want to keep this front door locked because we don't want any reporters coming in. All right. There it is, Lieutenant. Ah, great. This is the kind of case you dream about after a Thanksgiving dinner. The bullets that killed Nevins came from his own gun. The gun has only his own fingerprints. Suicide? Oh, sure. He rented a car, went to the top of a mountain in the middle of the night to a deserted house to kill himself while at least two other people were shooting at him. <laughs> Rough one, huh? This is one for TV. Jennings. 
Marine operator on the phone. Oh, thanks. Get some photo micrographs of this. Right. Hello. Lieutenant Jennings? Yes, thanks. We've contacted Dr. Linberry on his boat. Go ahead, sir. Hello, Dr. Linberry. This is Lieutenant Jennings of the North Highland Police. There's been an accident on your property. A man was shot last night. Over. Do you know if my property was damaged in any way? No, there was no damage to your property. The victim was Ralph K. Nevins. Do you know him? Over. No, I never heard of him. I thought you might be able to give us a lead. No, it won't be necessary to interrupt your vacation. Over. Thank you, Lieutenant, for calling me. But I'd appreciate it if you'll contact us when you get back to town, Doctor. Good luck on your fishing. Over and out. Well, the crime lab boys have covered every inch of that territory, but let's go out and look it over again. I don't think anything will help on this one but prayer. Well, it's Sunday. Let's go. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom we may seek for succor, but in thee, O oh Lord who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord, God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not unto the bitter pains of eternal death. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. This way to the I'll ride up front, Paulie. What are you thinking, Lieutenant? Same thing you're thinking. sugar. Hmm. Thank you, Kathy. I don't know how you're ever going to be able to sleep again after all the coffee you've consumed the last few days. Nevins Development Company. Oh, I'm sorry. He's busy. May I take a message? Well, this is his secretary. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Nevins. I, I didn't recognize your voice. How are you? Yes, of course. Just a moment. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Nevins. I've been waiting two days for you to call me, Marsh. I can't stand this. I can't stand not knowing what's going on. Well, things here have been in quite a muddle, Mrs. Nevins. We've been working day and night to get them straightened out. Police have been around here three times now. Your clothes are still hidden in Ralph's closet. Yes, I'll attend to that as soon as possible, Mrs. Nevins. We've still got people lined up three deep outside. We? Who's we? Kathy. Oh. Well, I want to see you, Marsh. Right now. Please. I will, Polly. I will when it's safe. It wasn't safe when you used to see me. That was different. What was so different about it? I've got to see you. Very well, Mrs. Nevins. I'll pick it up. Yes, I'll take care of it right away. What did you say? Fine, right away. I, uh, I gotta go out, Kathy. I'll finish the dictation later. Oh? Marsha, I don't think you realize the responsibility you were taking on with this job. You're not getting enough rest and you're not eating properly. Is it worth it? It's a good question. It's too much for one man to handle now. You should have more help. I've got a lot of help, Kathy. I don't know what I would have done without you. I make a pretty good stew. Would you like for me to fix dinner for you tonight? Thanks, Kathy. I'd like to, but some other time, huh? Promise? Hello, Paulie. 
What's the matter? I thought I was being followed. Were you? I don't know. I'm not sure, but I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going crazy. Afraid to answer the phone. Afraid to open the door. I missed you, Marshal. I've missed you, too. But we can't do this sort of thing. We're taking too much of a chance. Is that the only reason you haven't called me? Do you think I like this? Paulie, be sensible. We have no excuse to see each other except on business. Because the police have stopped asking questions. They mean they've stopped thinking. We still don't know what we're going to do when the Lindberghs get back and discover the robbery and then tie that together with Ralph's death. Is our not seeing each other to be a permanent arrangement? Of course not. When things calm down, we can be together, just as we planned. I'm sick of sitting around that house. I hate it now. It gives me the creeps. Is the business an alibi, Marsh? Or is it that little wide-eyed secretary I saw you holding hands with at the funeral? Paulie, stop it. You know better than that. Do I? Then why have you been rushing me off? What are we fighting about? We've got everything we wanted now. We can have everything right here. We can be together. Isn't that what we wanted, Marsh? It is. But I didn't expect the price to be so high. Price? But we don't have to run away now. You're in charge of the office. Ours, or will be as soon as the new strike starts paying off. Business is enough excuse. Bring some papers over for me to sign tonight. Polly, for heaven's sake, show him a little respect. He's only been dead a week. All right, Marsh. But I want to hear from you tomorrow. And I want to make sure it's business that keeps you occupied. You go out first. Your suitcase is in the back of my car on the parking lot. Tomorrow, Marsh. There's something that you wish, madam. You haven't got it. We can't copy this bracelet. Oh? So you see, each of our designs is exclusive. Now, we could design one for you and embody some of the features you like. Yes, here it is. Mrs. Pauline Nevins. But it was Ralph Nevins who Yeah, was... well, you see, they're friends of mine, and I wanted to have this bracelet copied for my wife. Your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you'll wait a moment, I'll uh, speak to my partner and see if we can make an exception. Operator. Give me the police. Yes, sir. That's the position we found the body in. The gun had fallen on the wall just above the driveway. That's it. Kill it. Well, outside of the call about the bracelet, I haven't got a single lead. Not even a hunch? Nothing very plausible. I'm going to check the bracelet. Hi, Inspector. Hi. I goofed. I've had him trailing Mrs. Nevins. What happened? Well, she led me down every back street and alley in town. I finally lost her in the Riverside District. She's a pretty cagey dame. No one's that cagey unless they've got something to hide. Maybe my hunch was better than I thought. Inspector, what do you think about Harrison, I've got a wiring job for you. I'm leaving for home now, Marsh. I'll have this report out for you in the morning. And don't forget your raincoat. It started to rain. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, Kathy, there is. Can make that stew. Why, that's wonderful. We'd better get the store before it closes. I'll get your coat for you.
you finally get your friend put to bed? I know it this afternoon. Watched her apartment for hours. How did you get in here? Said please to your landlady with a $20 bill. It's suicide if anyone knows you here. Don't you realize Don't the danger? Don't try to brush me off, Marsh. And I stick, I stick hard. You're drunk. Fix you some coffee. Sure, I'm drunk at figures. I found your bottle of scotch. I've been here a long time. You're making a fool of yourself. Why have I been here such a long time, Marsh? You think the time went faster for her? Kathy's done everything she could to help. Which includes fixing dinner for you. That's great. She knows how to cook. She's getting at your heart through your stomach. This whole discussion's making me sick to mind. Wally, I don't want to talk to you when you're like this. She may be a good cook, but she's slow. It's two o'clock. Why, Marsh? Why her? Is it just because she's there and I'm not? Wally, stop it. I don't want to discuss her. Oh, she's too fair and pure for me to discuss. We can talk about this tomorrow when enough trouble as it is. Why? Because of you. We were going to be great together. It was going to be great, just the two of us. Well, don't forget you're in this every bit as deep as I am. You got me into it. I killed Ralph for you, so don't you ever... You killed Ralph? Marsh, I... I didn't mean to. It was an accident. It was self-defense. He had the gun. He was going to kill me. He was going to kill you. He knew you were down there. I did it for you, Marsh. I did it for you. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell the police if it was self-defense? There was nothing they could have done to you. I don't know. I was afraid no one would believe me. And when you said that they shot him, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I was scared. It doesn't matter now. It's all over. The important thing is that we still got each other. Like it had to happen this way. We got the money. We got each other. Unless that little tramps change your mind for you. Polly, I got to be at the office early tomorrow. What did Ralph's desk give you ideas? You figure now you're in the driver's seat with a little secretary to play footsie with on a 24-hour shift? Well, don't forget, it's my company now. I'm paying her salary and yours, Buster. You're drunk. You don't realize what you're saying. Here, drink this and try to sober up. I'm going to take you home. Get your hands off of me! You're not taking me anywhere. I were dead, you couldn't take me to the morgue. Gentlemen. Hiya, boss. Hi. You, uh, you got back a little early, huh? Yes, I got back early, thanks to your blundering stupidity. Well, you told us it was going to be a simple job. We, we got hijacked. That's what he was there for, with a gun. Okay, okay, so it's my fault for recommending him. I tried to tell him, but he's green. He don't know how to pull off a job like this. I keep telling you, you can't relax in this business. Don't push me, fat boy. I'm not interested in excuses. Well, if you don't think that we're trying to double-cross you, I swear, on my mother's grave, that stuff was hijacked. And if we couldn't double-cross you, we couldn't handle anything that big. Then who got it? I swear, I don't know. I got no idea at all. The job came off simple, just like you said, until we got outside the house. And there's a guy there with a gun in my belly and a kid standing there with his gun in his belt. And this Nevins guy gets killed from out of nowhere he comes. So we, we figure we ought to lay low. Yeah. You 
Didn't get a look at the man who hijacked you. No, it's it's dark, and we're shooting at him, and he's running. Now, who can see? Hey, how about... How about you shutting up? You've done enough talking. If you've been on your toes, this wouldn't have happened. We figure as soon as things calm down, we'll spread out and start looking. Well, gentlemen, I see no advantage in continuing this conversation now. You will not, of course, leave town. I'll be in touch with you shortly. You almost ruined everything. You mad at me for... What are you telling about finding Evans' Dame bracelet? Look, kid, shut up and let me do the thinking for both of us. Now, you know what we're getting for this lousy safe job. That doll's mixed up in a killing. This bracelet's got to be worth minimum 100 Gs with no hot jewelry to peddle. The jeweler actually saw the bracelet yesterday, Mrs. Nevins. Why didn't you report its loss at once? It happened just a few days before. I don't know whether it was in a restaurant or a show we'd been to would have reported it sooner, except that with my husband's death, I, I forgot about it. We have a description of the bracelet. We've already put out a bulletin. The one point we've never been able to clear up, Mrs. Nevins, is a motive. On the evening of his death, Mr. Nevins made an appointment with his lawyer on an urgent business matter. You drove him to the office, but he left almost at once, without even talking with Mr. Franklin. He left in a rented car. There must have been some very pressing reason. Do you have an explanation? I had very little to do with my husband's business affairs. This appears to have been a personal affair, Mrs. Nevins. It's often difficult to separate business affairs from personal ones. I beg your pardon? Nothing. It, it's just that my husband never discussed business, and what wife knows anything about her husband's personal affairs? She'd know if there were another woman involved. This trip you planned to take, was it a reconciliation? Whatever it was, it doesn't matter now. Ralph's dead. That's why we're asking these questions, Mrs. Nevins. One reason for a man to rent a car is to avoid detection. Tell me, did Mr. Nevins have something to hide? Did you suspect another woman? Perhaps you even followed him once. Did you, Mrs. Nevins? Who was that woman? Please, I can't tell you any more. Mrs. Nevins, a moment ago, you said it was sometimes difficult to separate business and private affairs. That could mean someone connected with his business. Was it his secretary? We'd better have a talk with her. That's not fair. You can't accuse someone of murder just because she was close to him. You haven't accused her of murder, have you, Mrs. Nevins? You leave the accusations to us. That's our job. Sorry if we disturbed you, Mrs. Nevins. This is the lady who's been calling. He said to tell you he is not here. Hi, boys. You get a prize if you finish the bottle by noon. No lectures, Phil. Okay, no lectures. Just tell me something, Paulie. What are you trying to prove? I saw your two gentlemen calls as I came in. They looked like a lot of laughs. Well, six months for talking to myself. You don't mind if I take a swim, do you? Unfortunately, I can't convince Tom that a plumbing contractor is in the swimming pool class. But we do have a sensational bathroom. <laughs> Paulie, that's the first laugh I've heard out of you in days. Now, come on. Come on in with me. It'll do you good. You could use a little of that water to chase the scotch. Okay. As a matter of fact, I need the exercise. My waistline is getting a little aggressive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bathing caps ruin your social life after five. You ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, 
Hey, doesn't that feel great? Polly, the, um, the police have been to see me so often, Tom's getting jealous. I haven't told him anything because I don't know anything, but all that's doing is not hurting you. Isn't there something I can do to help you? No. Thanks, Bill, no. Okay. Mrs. Nevins. Instead of that old cliche, haven't I seen you someplace before? I'm going to ask you just the opposite. Haven't you seen me somewhere? What do you want? I think we both want the same thing. Well, I wonder yes, if... Yes, I know. I just remembered I have a very important engagement. He's a little older than I figured, but uh, I suppose he has hidden talent. Bill, listen, Look, you, don't... you don't have to explain to me. It looks like nothing. I suspected something a little younger. Well, Polly, I had a most divine afternoon. I can't tell you. I'd love to stay and have a drink, but you can't talk me into it. You know how it is. I've got a million and one things to do. As a matter of fact, Tom's having some guests to dinner. Out-of-town plumbers. You know how that is. I'll uh, check with you. You are a most unlikely hijacker. I should think you could get anything you wanted, just for the asking. I won't trouble you with the details of how I finally traced you and deduced that you murdered your late husband. I shall come at once to the important point. I'd like to have my jewelry back. Your jewelry? It was Mrs. Linberry's jewelry. Indeed. Well, uh, you see, Mrs. Nevins, I am Dr. Linberry. Doubtless, you will want me to be seated. I believe I can speak in perfect confidence with you because um, we're in the same boat, so to speak. Honor among thieves. If you really are Dr. Linberry, what were you doing robbing your own home? Uh, now, that, Mrs. Nevins, is a really interesting story. Unfortunately, the talented people are not always the wealthy people. Have you noticed that? I had talent, but no money, until I married Mrs. Linberry. <laughs> a charming woman, you must meet her. She inherited, among other things, a splendid collection of jewelry. Do sit down, Mrs. Nevins. After I married, it was unnecessary for me to work, but I couldn't bear to think of myself as a parasite, so I copied my wife's entire jewelry collection in paste stones. I sold the real gems one by one. You mean all those jewels we got were false? Not false in reference to such superior workmanship. It's true, the stones you hijacked were copies, but it would take an expert to spot them. I wonder if I might have a little of the soda water. No ice. Well, to return to my story, having disposed of the real gems, it occurred to me that it might be possible to reap a double profit. So I arranged for the paste jewelry to be stolen so that I might collect the insurance. It was at this point that you entered the picture and muddled up what should have been a magnificently simple job. You can understand how awkward it would be if it were discovered that the jewels are false. I'd be faced with a charge of fraud by the insurance people. And you, of course, would be faced with a murder charge. Naturally, nothing we say here will go any farther. What I'm asking is not at all unreasonable, since in any case the jewels are worthless to you. Whereas, I can return to you something of real value. I could have improved upon the design, but it is rather well made. I don't have the jewels. I hope, Mrs. Nevins, that you aren't going to make trouble. Because I assure you, I'd have no compunction against killing you. I'm going to make trouble, all right, but not the way you think. If you want that junk back, go ahead and get it. Where? At Mr. E.V. Marshall's apartment. 152 Marquia, apartment 305. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? We're interested in a little lady outside, Kathy Stevens. How did she and Nevins get along socially? Come on, Lieutenant, what's on your mind? It's just that we have reason to believe she was more than a secretary to him. Kathy and Ralph Nevins? Ridiculous. After you've been doing the work I do for a while, nothing sounds ridiculous. Mrs. Nevins doesn't think so? Mrs. Nevins told you this. It certainly would explain things, wouldn't it? 
Nevins was carrying on an affair with his secretary. Then he decided to break up with her and take his wife for a long trip. The secretary knew where they kept the gun, went with him to a deserted mountain spot, and shot him. That is ridiculous. It happens every day. Mrs. Nevins is lying. Why should she lie? What else could she possibly have against Miss Stevens? It's just not true. Ask Miss Stevens to come in, please. Look, I tell you, she doesn't know anything about this. We're paid to make our own decisions. Ask her to come in, please. Miss Stevens, will you come in, please? Miss Stevens, will you tell us again what you did on the night Mr. Nevins was killed? I went home. I went straight home from the office. What did you do? Well, I suppose I went to sleep. Kathy, what they want to know well, is... Let Miss Stevens tell her own story, Mr. Marshall. You went home and went to sleep. Can anyone confirm that? I live alone, Sergeant. About what time was it when you went to sleep? I don't know. It was late. Can you recall what you did between the time you arrived home and the time you went to sleep? Let's see. I, I washed out a few things. I fixed dinner. I watched television while I ate. And then what did you do? I took a shower and I went to bed. But you didn't go to sleep right away? No, not right away. And you never left your apartment at any time that night? I didn't say that. Well, suppose you say it now. Did you or did you not leave your apartment that night? Yes, I did. Where did you go? To Mr. Marshall's apartment. I see. I'm sorry. Well, that puts us right up the creek. It was a good try, Kathy, but why? I'll never believe that. I'm sorry. I had to try and give you an alibi. Give me an alibi? Yes. You were there. Both of you were there. You and Mrs. Nevins. I was going to kill her. And you killed him to save her. What makes you say that? I heard the recording Mr. Nevins made. The one you erased. You knew. From the beginning? Yes. I tried to pretend I didn't. I was so afraid for you, Marsh. Afraid they'd find out. I was even afraid to tell you. I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. He only knew what really happened. I only know that whatever happened, it wasn't your fault. It was my fault, Kathy. Everything was my fault. I started off wrong, and everything I've done has made it worse. Now I'm even beginning to corrupt you. Thank you. Thanks for trying to help me. I wish I deserved it. You see, I love you. I think I've loved you from the first moment I ever saw you. You're not the kind of man who can spend his whole life lying and hiding. I knew about her. I prayed that... I don't know why. I prayed you wouldn't go on sacrificing your whole life for someone who wasn't worth it. Oh, Kathy. I wish I'd known. I'm sorry. No. You're the one clean thing in all this dirt. I want to keep you that way. I want you to know that... No matter what happens, it can't change the way I feel. I think it can. I'm calling the police. Better get down here right away. We've got a real mess in our hands. We've got to decide on someone to take over the office. Take over? What about Marsh? Left. Left, no notice, nothing. He wouldn't even say what's wrong. Who? Kathy's not here either. She must have left with him. 
Do what you want. Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're going to sell them. Leave the country. Cut yourself off from your home and your family. You must have loved her very much. I'd like to be a million miles away from here, so I could start over. I'd like to be able. To... I wouldn't answer that if I were you. I'll take that briefcase, please. fortune in here. I suppose you gentlemen are the Yeah, police. you suppose right. Police, let's go. I may as well tell you the whole story. Yes, Inspector. Yes, we'll keep watch. Right. Don't let it slip through your fingers. Allen and Jennings are on their way. Yes, sir. Hello? Hi. Oh, hello, Phil. Polly, what's the matter with you? You sound beat. More than that. I'm going away, Phyllis. I don't know where, just away. Listen, Polly, don't you do anything foolish. You've been in love before, and believe me, honey, you can get over this. Besides, there's no point in your running away. I can't talk to you now. No, no, I'll talk to you later. Yes, I came back. You made sure I would when you told the police about Kathy. That was a rotten, lying thing to do. I'm sorry. I was jealous. I wanted to hurt you any way I could. I don't know why I acted the way I did. I don't know why I do most of the things I do. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself, Polly. There isn't time. Not anymore. It took me until now to see you as you really are. I get a good look at myself. Look, we can still get away. Forget about the money. Forget everything. I only want you. I've got a little money of my own, enough to get us out of the country. I know it sounds crazy coming from me, but I want to start over, start clean. Clean? Are we supposed to forget that Ralph's dead? Nothing you can do will change that. Nothing can wash away that kind of dirt. Don't you give me that holy stuff. What are you, some kind of a martyr? You're just as guilty as I am. You were rotten from the beginning, Polly. You're nothing but a cheap, ordinary little... I'm sorry, Marsh. Shouldn't be fighting. But darling, what's done is done. We can't change anything. We've got to make the best of it. All that matters is that you're here. You want me, you can't deny it, or you wouldn't have come back. Oh, darling, as long as we love each other, that's... I was in love with someone I thought you were. Someone wonderful. Someone I dreamed of. I'll be like that, Marsh. I'll do anything you want. We'll start all over again like there's never been any other people. No one but us. As long as you live, you'll never even understand what I thought you were. I'm sorry, Polly, but it's too late. She's right, Mrs. Nevins. It is too late. You called them? That's what I came back to tell you. You'll both have to come with us now to headquarters. Come on, Marshal. All right, Mrs. Nevins, we'll have to go now. I'll change into something decent. All right, if I change up there? Yes.
Don't try to run away, Mrs. Nevins. You won't get far. I've done all the running I'm going to. I told you I'm not worth it, Kathy. That's... that's something you just can't decide for me. I'm sorry, Miss Stevens. Let's go.